by the media. Minister Jao was speaking on Tuesday at the end of a training for media personnel in religious reporting organized by the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. Salih Jaju has the rest. Reporting on religious matters has been a sensitive area for the media globally. Sport journalists are still the only intermediate relied upon to raise awareness on religious issues. Organizers of this particular convergence say the training was crucial in ongoing efforts to nurture, interfere dialogue and promote the spirit of peaceful coexistence among the different faiths in the Gambia. We in the Gambia are, to a large extent, quite lucky that um, we've had religious tolerance in this country. People of different regions and uh, denominations have been living together quite peacefully since time immemorial. Even though in the recent past we have seen, you know, uh, that ugly head of um, uh, some extremists, I mean, trying to use religion to divide this country, you know, I mean, uh, that has happened in the past a uh, few years. Um, but fortunately, Gambians are very, very macho and uh, we, we were able to handle such a situation quite uh, well. And I can assure you that uh, this new government, we will never tolerate such kind of uh, system. The Amir of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat expressed the hope that the training scheme will improve the reporting skills of media personnel and inculcate a more balanced and objective approach in religious reporting. The Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat is very committed to peace, tranquility, and peaceful coexistence. To this end, we are always ready to contribute our quota in national development. We will continue to complement the efforts of the government in developing our dear motherland, the Gambia. Seku Jame is Gambia Press Union Secretary General. When you look at the religion and its reportage in journalism, oftentimes it seems that religion, are, religion and journalism are quite incompatible. On one hand, here you are talking about faith, something that I believe in, a way of life. And on the other hand, you have journalism, which tells you that you must be neutral at all times, which tells you you must at all times prevent, present the facts as they are, even if they go against your own religious beliefs. And here is where the pitfall most times occur. Participants at the training also share that their impression with GRTS. This training has uh, given us the opportunity to know the role of religion and reporting on religion issues. It's a good training and it's first time um, attending this kind of training, Sally, and it's very educative and we hope to um, have more about this training. Certificates were duly presented to participants at the end of the forum. This seminar on religious reporting for media personnel from different media organizations in the country is considered to be the first of its kind organized by the Muhammadiyya Muslim Jamaat as part of its efforts to make the media to be more responsive to the needs of all the religions in the country. It is believed that after such a training, the way media reports on religious issues in the country will take a different form as we build a new Gambia. Reporting for GRTS News, I am Sally Jajo. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Information Wednesday held its monthly press briefing. The event was presented over by the Minister and Farmer Kanye reports. The Minister of Information, Demba Ali Jao, has said, if all things work as planned, the Gambia government may increase salaries of civil servants by 2018. The government spokesman earlier this morning met local journalists to keep them abreast with new government policies and programs. On health and social welfare, the building resilience through social transfer for nutrition security in the Gambia. Um, the EU funded 3 million euro uh, building resilience through social transfers for nutrition security in the Gambia project facilitated by UNICEF is being implemented by the National Nutrition Agency with support from the Department of Social Welfare in collaboration with the Ministry of Health and Social Welfare. The press briefing gave journalists the opportunity to ask questions and clarify some misconceptions. We are seeing disturbing videos coming from Tripoli and pictures. 
I want to know the position of the Gambian government right now. Are they going to wait for negotiations to take place with regards to diplomacy? Or are they ready to send a flight for these people to be rescued once and for all? Because I know if these people are attacked, the criminals in Libya, they will sacrifice our boys. Thank you so much. The Gambia government is very much concerned about events going on in Libya. The diplomatic process is on. The Gambia is in consultation with, uh, you know, Libya is a very delicate place because they have more than one government in place there. And, uh, and the, the rebels are also very much active in certain parts of the country. The government has no control over certain parts of the country. That is the recognized government in Tripoli. So you see, um, it's a very delicate issue, but the government is handling the issue in a very diplomatic way, and we are trying to see how best we can be able to rescue our people from such. That is the situation at the moment. Minister Jao read a detailed statement showing the achievements and reform plans of the new government on key areas such as education, quality health care delivery, agriculture, youth employment, economic reform to curb in the menace of illegal migration. He also said the new government is set to ensure an effective judicial system and a standardized constitution that will meet international standards. Reporting for GSS News, I am Farmer Kani. A former financial controller at the Central Bank of the Gambia has appeared before the Jana Commission. Abdullah Cham provided details of transactions involving the former president and aides. For the Jana Bay, has the rest. Proceedings of the Commission of Inquiry, headed by Chairman Surahata Jane, continued at the Jimbe Hotel as someone to witnesses appear to give their testimonies before the ongoing investigation into ex-President Jame's financial transactions. Appearing for the first time before Commission members, former financial controller of the Central Bank, Abdullah Cham, opened the day's hearing. He was summoned in connection to the trip to the International Monetary Fund and money is taken by the former president. President and Baba Job. We have had issues with Baba Job in wanting to have his authority from the office of the president. And we were, we succeeded in having that. And this is his authority. No post factor on some of these transactions, but from the office of the president. What, what is the date of the authority? 7th December 2001. 7th? December 2001. Who signed it? Julia Ying. J.D. Joyen and Mrs. Secretary General. Well, what does it say? This is to intimate that Mr. Babaji, whose specific signature is appended below, is an authorized signatory to the above mentioned account, the 3M. Mr. Chan was further questioned by the lead consul, Ami Ben Suda, on whether the ex president had any exclusive dealings with the central bank, as well as transactions carried out on the public accounts by the former president. Now, in September 1994, the Central Bank Governor was approached by the Merita Council to make arrangements to hold funds that were expected amounting to 35 million U.S. dollars. Who was the Governor at the time? Mohamed Clark Bayo. And um, which member of the Council approached the, gov the, the, gov um, the Central Bank? He was summoned to the State House. The former financial controller at the Central Bank of Agambia was also tasked to explain the elements of a $35 million loan transaction acquired by the Gambia government during the previous regime. Did the money arrive? Yes, the Central Bank had expected to receive $35 million. $35? $35 million. This was not a grant, but a loan. From one of the letters that you read, um, I think we heard in 20, 2000 and Three, yeah. which Two. these the accounts started to be overdrawn from 2000. That's what yeah, I can from see. 2000, yeah, 2000. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so it's if this it's like it's like these stakeholders sort of found out mm -hmm. later at a later period mm -hmm. that these entries were not actually captured. That's what I'm getting to. Yes, not found out later. For those two three years, whenever they come, they will find a discrepancy. They will find the difference, that gap. Yes. Yes. It is always there. And that has been from day one. Okay. It is obvious. Hearings at the Janet Commission continue tomorrow with more witnesses set to appear before the inquiry into the financial dealings of ex-president Jame. Okay. It is obvious. 
Hearings at the Janet Commission continue tomorrow with more witnesses set to appear before the inquiry into the financial dealings of ex-president Jame. Reporting for GRTS News, I am Fatu Janimbai. And now, the Gambia Radio and Television Services and the leading beverage company in the country, Gambega Limited, have partners roll out another exciting round of the Fun to Science Quiz. The 2017-2018 edition was launched at a ceremony held at the GRTS premises, and Sena Bujang has the rest. show being launched in partnership with GRTS. GRTS Director General Ibrahim Asila said the national broadcaster is delighted to be a part of a program he described as an important endeavor for science and education. Today's digital advances and scientific cultures requires a great understanding of science and maths. to help them develop a critical mind so that together we can all develop this interest in the sciences. Young people can be part of the process and then by the time they go to senior and junior secondary schools, they have already started the foundation of uh, developing that uh, critical mind in uh, becoming part of uh, this uh, noble agenda of uh, having many science students in schools. Eugene Allen, the country director of the Gambega Limited, expressed elation for the continued collaboration with schools and students across the country. We are committed to this program. That is why we continue to invest thousands of dollars every year to make sure that this project works. And we believe to reap the benefits in due course. Derek Bock, a former president of Howard Harvard University, one said, if you think education is expensive, then try ignorance. Senior Higher Education Officer Lamin Sise stressed the Higher Education Ministry's commitment to enhance science and maths education. It has today become undoubtedly clear that a nation's competitive advantage, wealth creation or improvement in quality of life is derived from its ability to generate, exploit and diffuse scientific and technological knowledge. Fortunately, the government of the Gambia is fully cognizant of this, the importance of STEM in economic development and has put in place the necessary policies, institutions, legal and regulatory frameworks to guide the exploitation and utilization of STEM in the country. Deputy Permanent Secretary for the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education, Adam Ajimba Job, outlined the history of the program initiated several years ago and thanked Gambega and GRTS for supporting educational undertakings in the Gambia. The biggest quiz competition focused on improving and encouraging the study of science and maths. The Fanta Science Initiative is a Gambega scheme looking to empower young people through education. I am Saini Bujang for GRTS News. The Chinese Embassy has donated two vehicles and 200 footballs to the organizers of NACONF. Modu Lamensane was at the presentation and he filed in this news report. It all geared towards the successful hosting of the biggest youth convention in the Gambia, this meeting at the Chinese Embassy sets the ground for the presentation of two vehicles and 200 footballs to organizers of NECOF 2017. The donation from the Chinese Embassy to the Ministry of Youth and Sport is one of the biggest gestures in support of the youth convergence set to take place in December in the Gambia's Upper River region. It's not something new that uh, youth and sports, uh, we are facing some difficulties when it comes to vehicles, you know, and also when it comes to sports. But uh, we accept the situation because we know that government cannot do it all. And uh, But thank God we are having uh, real brothers and partners like uh, the People Republic of China.
The move described as timely by beneficiaries when China is ready to support and consolidate government effort to propel youth empowerment in every sector. It's a great pleasure for us, you know, to have this opportunity uh, to uh, show our support to NECOM and through NECOM uh, to the government and people's efforts to empower youth in the areas of youth and sports. So this is, uh, uh, I think, the first gesture. And uh, I will assure you that uh, Chinese government and the embassy here, while uh, uh, promoting bilateral relations, we will always keep youth empowerment, sports cooperation in mind on agenda as a priority area. And with this considerable backing from the Chinese diplomatic mission, youth leaders at the National Youth Council are keen and greatly optimistic about the success of the upcoming conference as they look forward to an engaging week for the young people. We are facing the most biggest event in the New Gambia, that is the NACOM 2017. And for that being the case, um, we open our arms to rich people, you know, to support this noble cause. And fortunately for us, the Chinese embassy, our brothers at Chinese embassy, came to our aid by donating to us two vehicles that will be used for NACOM and also to run the errands of the National Youth Council of the Gambia. Uh, this, is a, this is something that we really appreciate and we felt it will go a long way in trying to support the cause of young people in this country. As the neck of approach is closer, organizers are putting up final preparations for what is not only the biggest youth conference of the year, but the largest platform for young people to discuss and submit solutions for their problems. It all geared towards the successful... Well, with our viewers, we'll take a break when we return. We go with sports to stay with us. Welcome back, and now in sports. The National Sports Council has rescinded its decision to suspend the officials of the Gambia Football Federation. The announcement was made by the chairman of the National Sports Council at a press briefing. Momodu S. Jala was there and he now reports. The decision to leave the suspension on the chief of officials was announced at a press conference held earlier this afternoon here at the Independent Stadium boardroom by the National Sports Council Chairman, Mr. Bori Dabo, which was also attended by the Minister of Youth and Sports, Henry Gomez, and other officials of the National Sports Council and the Youth and Sports Ministry. Let's take a listen. You may further wish to know that the Honorable Minister of Youth and Sports also met the Head of State, His Excellency Adam Aparo, and matters centering on our current football crisis we are discussed in detail. His Excellency President Adam Abaro showed great concern over the matter and had asked the Minister to weigh in in the interest of the country's athletes and all its sports personalities so that we can avoid any possible suspension by the governing body FIFA, as that was what been paraded in the media, in the social media, and every corner of the Gambia. As I said earlier, the minister had engaged FIFA, and the discussions were fruitful. Following his meeting with the president, the Minister of Youth and Sport, Mr. Gomez, also had discussions with the officials of the National Sports Council. And as a result of that meeting, the National Sports Council has decided without malice to immediately lift the suspension 
on the executive members of the Gambia Football Federation and without any regret on his actions. I repeat, as a result of the meeting with the minister, after his meeting with the President of the Republic, Adam Abaro, meeting with the officials of the National Sports Council, we had held discussions candidly, frankly, looking at the Gambia first and not individuals. And the National Sports Council, as mandated by law or as it came into being because of an act of parliament, has decided to lift without malice the suspension on the executive members of the Gambia Football Federation and without any regret on our actions. Ladies and gentlemen, the National Sports Council has received a lot of complaints and protests forwarded to, to it from clubs and regions, and this cannot be left unattended to. These are complaints, and they need to be looked at. As a council, and as mandated by law, we cannot afford to leave the aggrieved helpless. We will continue <coughs> with our investigations, and a report will be submitted to the President of the Republic of the Gambia. A report will be submitted to FIFA. A report will be submitted to CAF, and will also be made available to you, the media, and the public. We believe when it is done and dusted, it will give every Gambian an opportunity to realize that the actions taken by the National Sports Council is not taken out of malice for any individual, but as part of a crusade to bring sanity and honesty into football and every sporting discipline in this country. Well, the key points in Mr. Dabu's statement are the suspension has been lifted, but the investigation will surely continue to ascertain the truth regarding the alleged misappropriation of funds and other issues involving the Gambia Football Federation. Well, we hope to see where all this episode ends. Mohamed Estial, Jayata Sports, at the Independent Stadium. The decision to leave this... Well, as the saga continues, we'll come to the end of this newscast. But before we take leave of you, our headlines once more. Sunday morning President Anes Bai Koroma is set to arrive in the Gambia ahead of a two-day visit. Vice President Ajaratu Fatima Dejalo Tambajang is among African and European leaders for the Africa-EU summit in Ambujang, Ivory Coast. Some executives of GRTS and Q Group have held talks in a bid to renew partnership between the two organizations. And the United Nations counterterrorism body has warned about the threat posed by ISIL despite the terror group suffering setbacks in Syria and Iraq. Well, viewers, that was all in this edition of the news. Thanks for the pleasure of your company. I am Tenenjite, and do stay tuned to GRTS. Good night. <laughs>